Welcome to the UIC Engineering Makerspace. I'm Hannah, one of the machine shop aides here, and today we'll be cutting a piece of 8020 using the vertical bandsaw and the manual mill. Some things to keep in mind when using the Makerspace is to always have your hair tied back, wear safety glasses, don't have any open-toed shoes, dangling jewelry, lanyards, or gloves, wear short sleeves, and always have somebody else with you in the Makerspace. Today we're going to be cutting a piece of 8020. Now we want this piece to be 11 inches, so we're going to measure this piece a little bit beyond the 11 mark because we want to have room to rough cut and mill the edge. So we're going to do 11.25 for this mark. After that, we're going to use a square to make a straight line so we have a guide on where we want to um, cut it on the bandsaw. This is the vertical bandsaw. We will be using this to make the rough cut on our piece of 8020. So to turn on the vertical bandsaw, you're going to push this start button, and to turn it off, you'll push in the stop button. If there's any questions or you're surprised by anything when the machine is on, you just want to push the stop button right away. These are the dials for the speeds. They are set for soft material like aluminum and plastics, so they are usually set to whatever you need, so you do not have to worry about those. The first step to cut the material is we want to set the throat. So here is the throat. First, we're going to want to raise it up using the top knob. And then we can slide our material underneath. Put the throat down, and we're going to touch the material. We're going to raise it up just a little bit so that our material can still slide through, but have as little of the blade showing as possible. Then we'll use the bottom knob to lock it into place. So we're going to move the piece on the side of the blade and line up the mark with the center of the saw. From there, we're going to grab our push block. This can be any piece of wood so that our hands don't have to get too close to the blade while we're pushing the piece of metal through. So I'm just going to secure it, and I'm going to push like this through the blade. Now we're ready to start the machine. We just used the vertical bandsaw to cut this rough edge. Now we're going to be using the manual mill to make this side perpendicular and parallel. We're also going to be making this side parallel and perpendicular by facing it, even though it is a factory edge. We just want to ensure that it is perpendicular. The first part to using the mill is securing your piece. We are going to use this vise to secure our workpiece. The first step is to wipe away any chips using this paintbrush. It'll just be sitting right here on the table. So we're going to be getting the parallels to raise the piece first. So those are here in this red box. So I'm going to be using these parallels. And so we will set them here against each jaw. And we'll place our piece of metal directly on top of our parallels and begin to tighten the vise. and then we can remove the handle and set it off to this side. And after our piece is secure, we're going to find an end mill. Those are located over here next to our parallels. Today I'm going to be using the half inch end mill. When picking an end mill, you want to make sure the cutting edge is longer than the piece of material. In this case it is, as you can see. So next step is going to be finding the corresponding collet to this end mill. Those are located on the side of the machine. I'm going to be grabbing the half inch collet and that's because this is a half inch shank so it'll fit directly into here and this will be your end mill. So now we're going to insert the collet into the machine. So this will be inserted and fit into a slot so this will just slide up. Once that slides up we'll take this rod right here and start to twist it to hand tighten it. This is closing the tapers around the collet so that, so that it will secure the end mill. Once it's hand tightened, we're going to push on this brake, use our wrench, which is the other side of the hammer, 
and we'll tighten it. You can let go of the brake and now your end mill is secured. So we've secured our piece and we've secured our end mill. The next thing that we want to do is make sure that both our handle and our wrench are here before we start the machine. We also want to make sure that our hands are nowhere near the blade while it's spinning and then we're going to be ready to turn on our machine. The mill is set to do aluminum. So we're ready to turn on the machine. We're going to use this lever to turn on the machine and we always want it in forward so we'll switch it up. So to move the axes, we have the Z axis with this knob. The first step is to loosen the brake. This will allow us to move it down to our cutting face. Then we can lock it back into place. We also have the Y axis, which is down here, and it can, it'll move us back and forth so we can face our piece. Then over here, we have our X axis, and this will allow us to cut off more or less material for what we want. So now we're ready to face. As you can see, I'm a little bit in front of the material, so I'm gonna use the X axis to bring it closer, just enough to face the material. So I'm going to need to go a little bit more. And we'll go back again. and now we have faced one side. So after we face that end, we're going to do the same thing on the other end, and then we'll have both faces parallel and perpendicular. From there, we'll cut the piece down to size using the digital readout. We've just finished facing our end, and now we're going to leave our mill exactly where it was, and we're gonna come over to our digital readout and zero it. So to zero the x-axis, we're going to press this button right here, and then now our access is set to zero. Next, we're going to measure how much we need to cut off our piece. I'm going to make a rough mark at 11 inches to make sure the end mill won't hit the vise. From there, we're going to use the caliper. And we're going to measure exactly how much needs to come off. We're at 11.323, so we're going to cut off 0.323 inches off. So on here, our number will return to 0.323 in the X direction, and then we know that we've cut all the material off. We are going to do this in multiple passes, and we will make sure the last pass is a shallow cut. This is to ensure a nice surface finish. So we finally made our piece to 11 inches. So our next step will be to just unclamp it. Take any chips out. So the final step to cutting this piece is going to be to file each of the ends. So we'll go in on each of the sides, pushing the file forward and going across all the edges and any corners. And we'll do one final pass across the top to ensure that everything is flat. So we've cut an 11 inch piece of 8020 using the vertical bandsaw and the manual mill for a butt joint.